So, I was on this show called the Non Sequitur Show the other week. This point is about three weeks ago. And uh, right away, I liked these guys off the bat. Atheists. And I had been invited to the show that day by uh, the Christian apologist. And I showed up that night, and I wasn't knowing what to expect. But immediately, I kind of hit it off with them. The one guy, Kyle, in particular, a uh, very genial sort from either North or South Carolina. I don't know. <laughs> I think we established it, but I could never quite get it straight. Um, yeah, kind of a hillbilly, but a good guy. And uh, it was weird because this was a very interesting phenomenon for me. And quite frankly, I didn't think it would be. This was a unique occurrence in that I was on a chat show with atheists and we were having a conversation about theological topics now, mind you, they were asking me all the same challenging questions, quote-unquote, that all the other atheists throw out and pretend like you're trying to avoid the challenging questions. You know how many times people have said that to me in my TL? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to avoid the confrontational attitude because it's obnoxious and it doesn't lead to anything. But these guys had no confrontation in them. They weren't asking me the questions trying to bust my ass like, you, be, you know, if you don't come up with the answer, I'm going to jump on you immediately. They were asking the questions and we were having a real conversation as if we were both concerned with ascertaining the truth of my position. Now that shouldn't be a unique occurrence and it shouldn't be an uncommon occurrence. But I promise you, it was uncommon to the point that so far I'm calling it unique. There is a style of debate that has become par for the course in Christian atheist dialogues where it's like, you know, Christian talk, shut them down. Here's my point, shut it down. Find the counterpoint quick and shut it down. Now, here's the problem. If you, the atheist, if you are actually concerned about the truth, that is a completely counterproductive way of ascertaining the truth of somebody's position. Yeah, it feels good. You shut down the Christian, woo, you score points. But it's not, it's, not, it's not valuable for ascertaining whether someone is telling the truth or not. Now, it was pretty unique that I was in a situation with atheists. And again, I got to stress, they were asking me all the same challenging questions. And they believe what you believe. But they weren't doing it in a way that was confrontational, trying to shut me down and shut me out. They were doing it in a way that was open-ended. Hence, they started to recognize at least... Uh, Kyle said something along the lines of, you know, he asked me how I became a Christian. I told him the story about how I went to church that night and the Holy Spirit came in and made God real to me. And I told him my life was powerfully transformed from that moment forward. I think he said something along the lines of, I believe you. I believe you. Because it was obvious I was telling the truth. Now, he didn't believe me that it was God necessarily. But he believed that that experience was real to me. And that I 150% believed that it was the living God that night that came and introduced himself to me sovereignly. I 100% believe that. And, you know, the fact that that is unshakable inside of me is not testament. Other atheists will say the fact that you, you believe it so wholeheartedly is testament to the fact of your rigidity or that you're dogmatic. I'm not a particularly dogmatic person. They found that out right away, you know. The one guy was telling me he was gay, and he came to the conclusion that I really honestly didn't care, because I really honestly didn't. Um, you know, I'm not a particularly dogmatic person. I'm not going to stubbornly insist that you adopt my beliefs or my lifestyle um, in any way, shape, or form. I'm just telling you the truth of my experience. You can do with it what you want. That part's up to you. But... What I'm getting at is that this experience, you the atheist owe it to yourself to make this experience more common. You put me in a room for an hour with, or two hours with, with uh, the most hardcore atheist who ever atheist. I don't know, who's the most hardcore, who's the most atheist of the atheist? Aaron Ross, he was like Mr. Atheist. You know, he gives me a fair hearing He's going to walk away at least impressed that I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth according to me. Now, even that sentence, atheists have tripped out over. The truth according to you. Blah, blah. That's the only truth I can tell, Holmes. The truth according to me. That's the only truth I actually know. Neither of us know what's capital T true. 
We are operating, we are all of us operating under assumptions. We are all of us operating with preconceived notions and biases. Overcoming them is part of trying to figure out what is true. But part of overcoming them is giving people a fair hearing. Now these are the first atheists that I ever happened to stumble upon on a live show that actually gave me a fair hearing in the sight of other people. Other atheists will give you a fair, fair hearing sometimes when, you know, behind closed doors, in DMs and things like that, in private. But they're all start, when they do that, they're already starting to become convinced. They're already starting to become convinced that something inside of you is, is, is something that you are talking about is resonating with them on a deep level. And they're starting to experience on some level that you are telling the truth for themselves. That's why they're giving you a fair hearing. They'll do it in private. They won't do it in public. I don't expect them to. These guys did it publicly. And they don't necessarily believe me. I don't think they believe. They didn't, they didn't come away. They just came away convinced that I was being honest. That I was telling the truth. I was being honest and telling the truth. And again, the truth according to me. That isn't some weird statement that makes the truth meaningless. It's the only truth that I can tell you, the truth according to me. You need to decide for yourself. If I say the Holy Spirit made himself real to me that night, and I say that's a God's honest truth, so help me God, you could decide for yourself whether that was actually God. I just wet look crazy. Oh, he just crazy, man. He's crazy, crazy, crazy. Could be. Could be. But from that day forward, my life was powerfully transformed in ways that were unmistakable to my entire family. My entire family, knowing my entire life. Yeah, they had. They'd known me since I was born. And I changed overnight. My sister came out with her brother-in-law, and he's a very well-educated person. Thank you very much. Wharton School of Finances, near genius. Freaking millionaire. <laughs> he's a freaking millionaire. Lectures in front of the World Bank. He's like a, VP. He's like a really well-educated, highbrow individual. He was so impressed, he became a Christian that day. Boom. Went back. Believing. Why? Because it was powerfully obvious something really powerful had transpired. Something you couldn't fake. Something, you, something that was real on some level and deep and meaningful. Because I transformed almost completely into a new creation. A completely different kind of human being. Now, we can go into, in, in, in depth, what those trans, transformations meant. But, it's just something to think about. So, kudos to the Non Sequitur Show. They are, they are honest brokers of information. They are honestly trying to, when they have theists on their show, they aren't just trying to bust their chops. They're honestly trying to ascertain the value or the truth of that theist position in there, giving them a fair hearing every time I've watched the show. So I applaud you gentlemen. Amen.